This is Ryan Womack, Data Librarian at Rutgers University, and this is a screencast version of the hands-on big data workshop that was initially presented at the IASIST annual conference in Minneapolis in June of 2015. I wanted to, in this part zero of the video series, talk about some of the setup issues for those of you who may be uh, new to this and have some questions about what we're going to be using in terms of software and configurations. So if you're comfortable with your computer setup, uh, you feel confident navigating around, installing things, um, and you've worked on the command line in a terminal, um, and you've, you think you know a bit about what cloud services are about, um, you've used Amazon Web Services before, you can skip this video. There is no content in this video um, about big data. It's all about setup. But I wanted to provide some background what people new to this might need to complete some of the parts of this workshop. So um, I work in a Linux environment for the most part because it is easier to uh, work with other uh, servers and web tools that primarily also work in a Linux environment. Um, so the screencast that you see is coming out of a Linux environment. I am going to talk about Windows setup uh, and show you some images, but I'm, I'm not going to screencast anything from a Windows desktop. Um, if you're working on a Mac, uh, you have the ability to get into a terminal that behaves you know, just like a Linux um, terminal, like a Unix shell, and your experience should be very similar. There are really not any issues for Mac users. Um, but what we are going to do in in the bulk of the hands-on part of the session is to use Amazon Web Services and to authenticate and use Amazon, Amazon Web Services you have to know a little bit about keys and configuration and credentials and logging in. So that's what this setup is about. Um, there is a slide a little bit later on in the slide deck on AWS setup that links you to the help for configuring these things. Um, I'm just going to step through it briefly here so you see what I'm talking about. Um, so in order to, to complete these um, tasks that I'm going to show you, uh, you need to have an Amazon Web Services account. And you can create one at the site aws.amazon.com. Uh, and once you've created it, you can sign in. Now, it does take a few hours for um, the account can be created, but it'll take a few hours for you to actually be able to uh, run services on Amazon. It takes a while for you to be set up that way. Um, and you can do a lot from the web interface. A lot of what we will do is from the web interface, so there's no special setup needed there. But Later, we're going to need to know about keys and um, user, user identity credentials. So to do that, the easiest way for me to show you that is to go to the EC2, the first link on the page. This is El Amazon's Elastic Computing Cloud. And later, when we're actually running things, we're going to be creating uh, computing instances up on the cloud. But for right now, I'm interested in the network and security down on the left. Uh, there are other menu paths you can take to get to this information. I think you will see that in some of the videos later. But for a start, this is a place to go. Amazon, Elastic Compute Cloud, and we can go to Key Pairs. Now, the key is uh, just like you would use a key in a secure transaction online, um, this is a key that you would keep yourself on your own computer. There's a public component and a private component, and when we say create key pair, you can name it whatever you like, and once you create it, um, let's just do that for you here, create you will be given the option to download the private key. So this is very important. You only get one chance to do this. Save it. Keep it somewhere on your computer that you can find it because you will need it later. Um, 
I'm actually just going to delete this key immediately, so I'm not going to save it. Um, and that's all you need to do to create the key. But when you create it, make sure you save that file, the PEM file. So later on, let me just delete the one I, d I created. I don't really don't need that in my system right now. Um, this is where you go to create the key. So the key will be used on the command line as our authentication token to get into a lot of the Amazon services. There's a second concept uh, called the credentials. And the credentials uh, can also be accessed from a few different um, network paths, but let me go here under security credentials. So in the top right, you've got your account, you've got the um, security credentials, and you can do a few things here. You can follow the suggestion to create individual users that have specific roles. Uh, that is a useful thing to do, but this is the, the first introductory session, so uh, set up, so I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm just going to uh, click Continue to Security Credentials, and I'll go over on the left-hand side to Users. And here I can create a new user. Uh, for the demo, uh, this time I was using this YouTube user to complete most of the actions. Um, I can create new users and create a name for those. Whatever you like. And it will then, by default, generate an access key. So when we click Create, we have a warning message. This is the last time that user security credentials will be available for download. We have to download those. We're going to need them. So go down to the bottom right, click download credentials. Again, you'll get a file. Put it somewhere on your machine that you can find it and um, let's not do that right now. Uh, let's we'll look at an existing credentials file that I have. So the credentials are actually just a couple of little uh, identifying tokens, and we're going to use those again in other cases for authentication. But you only get one chance to download them. So download them when this first appears. Uh, and I'm just going get, to get rid of this um, new test user in a second. The other thing, once you create a user, is the user will have permission to do certain things on the system. You want to attach a policy, and I'll talk about which policies you need to attach later in those parts of the of the workshop, but just be aware of this mechanism. The um, policies give a particular user the ability to do things in different parts of the Amazon system. So that's what that's about. Uh, let me go up to my users, and I want to select this user and delete him. If you lose a key, or you you know you forgot to save it, you put the key somewhere else. It is just a few menu clicks to delete the keys for an existing user and generate a new one. No real problem with doing that. Just that you you are going to have to reset your logins in other places. All right, so that's what we need to do uh, in the Amazon Web Console. We can create users and create security credentials for them up here under the account security credentials. We can uh, also create key pairs. I like to use the key pair link from the EC2 cloud just because um, it's clear that then these are the keys that will apply to the EC2 services. All right, that's, that's part one of the setup. The second part of the setup is you are going to need access to a terminal window, a shell, a command line interface like this. Now on Mac users will have this as a direct option. Um, Windows users can do one of two things. Windows users can use a helper application that simulates a shell. Uh, one simple, easy to install one is called Putty, and you can Google that, go to the download page, 
grab a version of it. Very simple uh, software, easy to run. Uh, let me just Google a screenshot for you. Um, and it gives you uh, a menu driven environment that will enable you to open up an SSH connection to different web services. Um, I, this is not a, a guide to PuTTY in this, in this video, so I'm not going to go further than that. You can look at, for the PuTTY help if you want to use that. Uh, and also, there's a PuTTY Gen application, which will help you when you download a key in the Windows environment. Windows does not like the format of the key that Amazon generates, the .pem format. You're going to have to cre convert it to a .ppk. Uh, but it's this helper application, Putty Gen, can load the um, the other key and convert it to PPK. There are instructions on how to do that on the Amazon site that are linked. Um, but I'm not going to go further in that direction in the video right now. The second option, which if you're if you're going to be doing this for a while, uh, I would actually recommend to you is instead of relying on one small application, you can actually get a more full-featured Linux-like environment for Windows. And there's a project that does that called SIGWIN. You can Google SIGWIN, go to the site, and select uh, the options to install. SIGWIN has a base installation that's, that's fairly small. And then you can choose other things that you want to add. Um, the full installation has many different programs and is kind of big. Uh, if you choose other things, just be aware you need to make sure that you add SSH, the secure shell, to the things that you're installing. Um, once you have this on your Windows system, you can launch SIGWIN and then you'll have a terminal that behaves just like you need it to for a Linux environment. Um, so, again, I'm not going to go further in this direction, but for those of you who want to configure everything in advance before you start into the workshop itself and you're running on Windows, choose one of these options, either PuTTY or SIGWIN, get it installed, um, make sure it's working, and then you'll be able to uh, complete the other steps in the workshop. And get your Amazon Web Services account. And the last thing I should mention is when we're working on the command line, uh, we're going to, it's going to help us in several cases to have what's called the Amazon, the AWS Amazon Web Services command line interface. So uh, the link in the slides will take you to the, the section of the uh, Amazon documentation that describes how to install it on different systems. And you can just follow those instructions. They're pretty detailed. They, they, I don't think there are any issues with those. And what this will do is uh, provide an application in your terminal environment called AWS uh, that you can run to do certain things. In order to configure it for remote access, so what this helper application does is it'll automatically create connections to the remote servers on the Amazon side and simplify a lot of uh, administration of running those computers. So the first time you start it, you're going to have to type AWS once you've installed it, type AWS Configure, and it'll prompt you for two pieces that are in your credentials. Now, your credentials file, uh, you should have saved it somewhere on your system. Uh, let's see if I have mine here. And it's gonna, just going to look something like this. Uh, a username. So this is the credentials for the user YouTube, an access key, and a secret access key, which is a slightly longer jumble of letters. So just take this access key from the credentials file, copy it over to the window, uh, paste it in, and 
hit enter, uh, it'll update. Uh, mine have already been entered, that's why I'm seeing this um, prompt that shows me the part of the code. It's not going to harm me really to re-enter them here, so I'm just going to do that. And then it'll ask you for your default region. Now, um, I'm in U.S. East. There's uh, other parts of the, of the U.S. There are some other global regions. You should be able to find this information from your login um, in Amazon. Uh, or you can Google a list of the Amazon regions and figure out which one you want to connect to as your default. Um, and then an output format uh, that you want as your default. I just have defaulted mine to text. You can actually do uh, JSON and some other output formats. And that's it. Now I'm configured and later in the slides when we ask you to run the, Am the AWS commands, uh, they will run correctly. If you haven't done this configuring, you, you won't be able to authenticate. You'll type AWS something and you'll get an error that comes back and says you're not properly authenticated. So we'll see some contexts where the key the, that ends in .pem is used and some contexts where these credentials are used uh, for the remote access. And uh, those will come up later. But I wanted to do this video uh, for those of you who who were wondering about the setup requirements uh, and so just once again make sure you can operate on AWS you have uh, a terminal to type commands into uh, that will get you out on the internet uh, a working terminal environment uh, you've configured your credentials in the Amazon command line interface and you have saved your keys and credentials to a known location, a known private location for you that um, you can access. But anyone who has those credentials can log into your account so don't put them up on the internet and the keys that I've just shown you here on the video uh, I'm going to make sure that I go back and delete all those things before these videos go live. Um, so don't, um, not really going to help you too much to get into my Amazon account with those credentials. All right, um, that's the setup. Thanks for sticking with me for that. And part one will introduce the workshop and give you uh, the actual big data part, get into something more interesting. Thank you.